Yay. Hi, everybody. This is Cindy with Energized Living Today, and Ferris is back. Everybody say hi to Ferris. And Ferris is Energized Living Today. <laughs> with the emphasis on living. Well, yeah, Ferris, not so much Not so much emphasis on Energized yet. Just... <laughs> yeah, but you look better. You know, the other day you scared me when I saw you. <laughs> You were, you're always pasty white, but. That's what the grandkids always say. That you're pasty white? No, that I scare them when I see them. Oh. <laughs> well, you look, you looked pretty bad. You, you're looking better. You're starting to look better. So did I look I, that bad, really? You did. You look so bad, you scared the heck out of me. Well, thank you for waiting to tell me. I <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, but I told I, everybody else. <laughs> I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> it really made me nervous. So, um, Ferris, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody about your test? Oh, well, uh, Cindy talked me into going to, to, to get the COVID test. Uh, and I went to a uh, uh, walk-in clinic at uh, Vanderbilt's, one of Vanderbilt's walk-in clinics. Uh, there were two receptionists in the building. When I walked in, and they're the only two people in, that I saw in the building. Uh, it only took me 20 minutes to get checked in. Uh, the poor lady who was, she must, she must not have worked there long or or was part-time or something because everything was Ferris, F-A-R-R-I-S, P-O-O-L-E. Lord, she typed slower than me. Uh, I was going to say she sounds like you. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't even move my lips when I type, let alone do it out loud. Mm. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway. An hour and a half later, they, what they did is they sent me, there was nobody else in the, in the building that I could see. They sent me outside to wait <laughs> and then called me on my cell phone when it was my turn to come in. <laughs> uh, I mean, they were, they were being careful and that was good. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the guy who did the test, the guy was great. They take this log and stick it up your nose uh, about three feet. Uh, <laughs> actually, it, it wasn't that bad. It was a, it was a uh, cotton swab about six, seven inches long, but it was real tiny at the end. He said the ones that you see on the news, you know, they've got, they've got the ends of the cotton swabs about that big around. Uh, but this one was hardly any bigger around than the, than the uh, stalk of the swab. Uh, it took two days to get the results back and I got it online <clears throat> and it's negative. And of course, now I know that I've had a uh, COVID test that is negative and all I have to worry about is whether the damn test is any good or not. There's, that was one of the things that they told me the other day, Ferris, when I was in the hospital, uh, you know, for my heart checkup thing. And they said they have a lot of false yeah. negatives and a lot of, false positives. Yeah. And, um, and one patient that they had in was negative until after they died. And then they tested again and it was positive. Well, I guess they showed those folks. <laughs> so it, it just, you know, it's, it's an unreliable test. Um, it, so all you can do is isolate yourself yep. at this point and then check later for antibodies, which hopefully will be more reliable. And for those of you who ha weren't here before, and by the way, I just, it's so good to see y'all this morning. It I is. I just love seeing your beautiful faces. And, I have, okay. Confession. And I love seeing Ferris, and Ferris, you bring the energy of humor back, and I just, Thank I you. love that. Well, I have a confession to make. I did not want to see anybody this morning. I just wanted to sleep, but Cindy woke me up and said, come on, so I did, and I'm glad I did. So thank you. It is good to see y'all. <laughs> <clears throat> well, we love you all so much. And um, anyways, what was I saying? 
Oh, I lost my train. My train just derailed. <laughs> um, yesterday, and I, I want to know, um, oh, Fer oh <laughs> Devana said Ferris missed his um, calling of comedian. Okay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and he is. He, he brings humor to it. He makes, he's been making me laugh for 27 years. Ferris, you can't let anything happen to you because I don't know how to work this darn technology. <laughs> Although we have to say, Andrew has done an amazing job. So let's all just give him a big hooray here. Yay, Me Andrew. Too. Where is he? <laughs> I don't know. He said he might not be able to be here this morning. It's a mm. different time zone. Yeah. There, so. Um, he, he yeah, might, they make those. Yeah. He'll be there, you know, he might be here. He wasn't sure. Anyway, um, let's see here. Happy to have you back, Ferris. Lots of great comments and, and I'm glad too. Like I said, the other day, just before we went on, um, the day we were doing the, the, the um, forgiveness ceremony, I had just seen Ferris and it scared the shit out of me, everybody. I, I got to tell you, Ferris, you scared the shit, the shit out of me. In fact, I called Mary afterwards and said, I just got to talk to you because it scared me so much. And I just needed to get that fear out. And it's because I love you so much. You know, you're my best friend. Oh. <laughs> it's just, you know, I can't imagine life without you. So me neither. You got to stick around. You got to stick around. Um, and uh, Linda, thank you again for telling me my shades were on my head. <laughs> I, I wear them there all the time. I'm always switching between glasses and shades. Um, uh, what's the trick to, show, to uh, growing basil? Um, putting it in an area where there's some shade, where it's not constant sunlight, because if you get too much sun, it will actually dry it out too much. Also, don't overwater it. Most people, when it comes to herbs, everybody, they overwater their herbs. They, they like it dry. They like a part shade area where you're having, you know, about four hours of sun a day is, you know, about right. Maybe five hours, but, but if it's hot in your area, keep it in the shade. You know, keep it where, where there's some shaded area. And it grows beautifully. I mean, really, it's a weed. <laughs> so it'll grow like a weed. What do you do with weeds? You leave them alone and they grow well. When it gets, you know, fairly dry, that's when you know to water it. So, okay. Those are the questions so far. Uh, Ferris, what were you going to say earlier? About what? Well, if I knew, I wouldn't ask you. <laughs> kind of, you started, kind you started of moving your lips. <laughs> uh, I was typing. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Just got that. <laughs> Sorry. It almost went. <laughs> uh, I was when I went to the. Lips. What's that? I was moving my lips. Yeah, you started to move your lips, so I thought you had something to share. Hello. Um, I, I, when we went to the farmer's market, you know, people were really in good spirits, and it was good to see that. It was good to see people respecting, um, you know, social distancing. Um, there were a few people that did not wear their masks, and I found myself getting angry. I, I just... I found myself, please, please respect me and please respect the farmers and the community. These people are out here working for you to make sure that you have food for your table and, and for your family, you know, and um, please respect them. Even if you don't respect me, respect our food sources. And I found myself thinking that and would love to hear from y'all how you feel about that. With the, I, I calmed myself down pretty quickly, but I, I just was surprised that that came up for me. So how do y'all feel about that? Ferris, you want to start? 
at the very, very least, it's a sign of respect. Uh, whether you whether you think that the coronavirus is a hoax, uh, <clears throat> whether you think it's political, uh, at the very least, it's a sign of respect for those people around you. So yeah, it makes me angry too. Yeah, and it 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 isn't political. It isn't, and people are trying to make it that. It is. I've been getting a lot of downloads, and um, I'll share those in a moment. Before I before I do, I really want to hear from everybody else and your feeling about it. Anybody? Mary? Mary, what you got? There you go. I think I, I mentioned before every, anyone else came on, and if you all have already heard it, I apologize, but I went to the farmer's market yesterday as well uh, here in Murrells Inlet, South Carolina, and pretty much everybody in there had a mask on, which made was really great, um, except for the one lady who was in line just in front of me, and I they have you staggered back far enough, I couldn't see who was ahead of me. And as I came around the little curve to be next, um, there she was, she's coughing and hacking and just chewing all over everything. No mask, um, no gloves, uh, anything. And I have to tell you, as much as I always feel for older people and I really reach out to them uh, in any way I can, that time I was really, I was angry. I thought, what are you doing in here? If you're this bad off, you need to get, because you can call in orders and they'll make sure that she gets it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I was very upset by it. And and I, I didn't really worry, but I took all the precautions that Jerry had told us about the other day, the other night when she was on. So I was very grateful for that information that she brought in. But that's that's what I've seen around here. A lot of the younger people in this area, and there's a lot in the Myrtle Beach area coming down to play. Mm. No, no masks, no anything. They have let the police now, uh, given them a, a little broader authority now to go in out to the beach, on the beach, or on the boardwalks areas where, where they're really congregating and drinking and carrying on. Uh, and they've given them the authority to just go and break it up. And the same with boats here. We've had a lot of boating problems where people are going out on their boats. It's finally nice enough to get out on the boat and have 10, eight people on a boat, which is too many for most of these size boats. But they're all like this, this far apart and they're pulling them in, um, which was very interesting to see. So wow, that's how it is over on this end. Hmm. Anybody else? Uh, Devonna said some people may not have a mask or know how to make one, and she fell into that category early. And I, and I can have some sympathy for that, but everybody knows what a bandana is. And I, I have seriously thought about uh, making some masks or getting some somewhere. And when I see somebody without them, offering them a mask. And so I've, I've really seriously considered something like that and today I considered that. But again, um, you know, I, I don't know why people are feeling this. Um, some people, okay, that's- Bernadette, what you got? And good morning. Good morning, Ferris. It's so good to see you back. Thank you. Um, we had, I shared a couple of ways to make masks on our Facebook page. Oh, good. And so there is one that actually has a HIPAA filter in it that can be used in hospital settings. And it's made out of a Hoover HIPAA filter bag, so for the vacuum. And so if anybody wants to go on our group and see that, there's one that's just made, there's four different ways to make masks. Um, 
for example, I just cut this piece of cotton that I had from a sheet. And you just have to fold it into three pieces. If you want to use your little filter, you can use your filter. And then all you do is you scrunch up these edges with just a rubber band. You put one on one end and one on the other. And you can use an old t-shirt, you can use whatever you want. If you put the filter in the middle of this, you actually have some kind of a barrier, but it's not that great. I'm gonna to try to make one of the HIPAA ones, if I can uh, find one of those bags, because I thought that would be a fun project. And then what you do with these two ends is you put one inside the other. But what I've found is, depending on how wide your face is, it may not go all the way and you want it to cover completely. So one of the ladies was recommending that you can open it up a little bit and put a safety pin on both sides to oh. hold, to make it a little bit bigger. Now, you were talking about having it seal all the way around. And if I had any rubber bands, just plain old simple rubber, thin rubber bands, if you link three of them together, you know how you tie them to kind of make a chain? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, when you have your mask on, if you put three of them together, then I'm going to demonstrate this. So I hope you can hear me through all this filter. <clears throat> the first, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So the first rubber, rubber band would go here and it seals the nose all the way to the chin. And then this other two loop around your ears. And that actually gives you the seal that you need around your nose and your mouth. Oh. So these are simple things that we can do that, you know, if we don't have a mask, you might have an old t-shirt or, or something, you know, and I would recommend cut, it says a regular bandana is 21 inches. I'd probably recommend cutting it like 24 inches if you're gonna do the tuck because you wanna have enough room to cover and seal everything all the way around you. So, you know, that was just some interesting things, but if I can get one of these HIPAA ones, you, you can see the video that I shared with the HIPAA one and then the one with the cheese is just plain t-shirts and stuff. And there's all different ways to make them. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. And um, there, there you go, a quick little demonstration, except the only thing is with these rubber bands, it makes your ears stick out. So you look kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't look funny with that big old mask cloth over your face, but, but having your ears still come out. <laughs> <laughs> your ears stick out like this. <laughs> I really thank you. We talked yesterday and I asked her to share and I, I thank you so much. And you just answered a question that I've been hearing online a lot. Where do you get um, quarter inch um, elastic band? Because they're out of it everywhere because people are making masks. So um, using the hair bands works. Or you can and, also use okay. a piece of t-shirt uh -huh. Or a nylon hose, like an old pair of pantyhose that you can just cut up. Oh. Anything that has plastic to it, you can use for all of that. But just the regular rubber bands, you know, you get them on everything. So, you know, you put three of them, you just link three of them together. And when you have this on your face, it actually smushes it in around here and you get that seal. Now you have to be careful I think if it's too, too close to your face and you have too much material, it's hard to breathe. So, you know, yeah. I, I kind of liked the HIPAA one I shared because that one was made, it was more of the cone shaped and it went like this and it had the seal around the nose. Mm -hmm. uh, this lady's husband was a doctor and he was running low on masks and he wanted a last resort because he works with the COVID patients. So, she went, she found the way to use a bag and you don't cut the stitching because the stitching is what's going to create 
Mr. V and the stitching will be this part over here. And then it looks like a V. So you put it on like this. So it seems like it gives you a little bit more room to breathe. Oh, okay. So look at the videos. And the blue that dust mask that, she, that Penny's just <clears> asking <throat> about, that actually works just fine. In most cases, you don't need the yeah. N95 unless you are actively right. sick. It is our healthcare workers that need them. You know, right. simple ones like this are just fine. Yeah, and, um, well, that's what we have. Yeah, and this one you can put a, um, does this one have a, I might have it upside down, whoops. Does this one have, yeah, this one has a little thing in it, have it upside down, so you can actually push it against, this is like what Jerry was talking about the other day. You know, we had this, and when I went into the hospital, they gave me this, but I had my own. Um, and I also have, now my mask is out in the car. I left it in the sunshine instead of putting it in my purse like I was doing after Jerry's talk. <laughs> I've been more cognizant of what I do. So Gary and I've been just leaving them in the car so that they <laughs> will kill any germs. And on the inside, um, Bernadette, we have this that goes on the inside of ours. Um, these are little N99s, meaning little uh, dust particles don't even get in there. And this is, um, there is um, charcoal in here. Do you have a mask liner? Yes. Huh. Well, so aren't this, we well, fancy? It's like this. And, and um, so, yeah, it goes right in there that you can put in it. And this is an, this is an N95. I don't know which way it goes. Anyways, it, it fits in there. Where did you get that, Cindy? Um, I ordered this online, but I ordered these before the there rush. was a shortage of everything. So I don't know if these can be made, but these, this is a filter. And the thing is, I was looking at this and I said, you know, a coffee filter would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can make these out of coffee filters. And um, I don't know what's, what's in here. I haven't taken one apart because I don't have that many. I didn't want to destroy one. But, um, but there is charcoal in here, and this is an N99, which means even the smallest of dust particles don't get through it. Well, so, I'm wondering if, if we could use like the same HIPAA filter bag for the vacuums. That's what I'm wondering. <clears throat> if you cut inside. When I, the... when I get to that research, I will get back to you on it. Okay. Because um, if, I, if I buy, it comes in a package of two, you can make four masks out of it. Uh, maybe I'll see if I can cut one piece and see if there's some kind of a liner I can make. I did like the rubber band thing because it did seal all the way from your chin all the way to your nose mm -hmm. without having that little, so if you don't have something like that, you know, that might work. And she was giving a demonstration, the girl, I watched several videos, but one was giving the demonstration of how small these particles were that went through things. But like they're saying, Unless you're in the actual environment, you're just protecting yourself from other people when you're out. Okay. So, well, and you're yeah. protecting other people from you. Yeah. Well, that's just it. Yeah. I love the video that was going around. You protect me. A nurse said, you protect me, I protect you. Exactly. You're wearing a mask and I'm wearing a mask. You protect me, I'm protecting you. And that's really what it's all about. This... This, folks, is not about fear. Mm -hmm. It is about respect. Exactly. And I saw this video of someone that I really respect. And she was talking about, you know, the, the fifth dimension. And on the fifth dimension, there's no fear. And, you know, everybody's living in the third dimension in fear and that we're in the fifth dimension. And I got what she was saying. I I really did. But as soon as I heard it, I started getting all these downloads. And what the first thing I heard was, she doesn't understand what this is about. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. And while we are in the physical, we are to respect our physical beings. You know, years ago, I used to be a storm chaser. I, I still love storms. And then I was in uh, a Target store 
when a tornado hit it and ripped off the roof. And then I was in downtown Nashville, just left Ferris. Ferris was actually supposed to be in the car with me. And um, I was heading for an appointment and he was in the middle of a photo shoot and wanted to continue. And our friend Tony, another photographer, was on his way to see Ferris. We actually were passing each other on the highway, which I didn't know until later. Here's a tornado that comes. I'm on the phone talking to a friend saying, do you want to go with me to this appointment? And, and I said, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. And then I remembered them saying, when there's a tornado, you know, your ears will start popping and you can't hear. And I look to the side and here's a tornado coming towards us. And I dove out of the, the passenger side. I pulled over, dove out of the passenger side, had my window down just a little bit. So it sucked my shoes off. And, um, and I dove out of the car along with everybody else. I mean, the highway was full of people. And Tony was on the other side and it's, it had started picking up our cars like this. Just one side of the car started lifting. And then um, the, the guy next to me went in a total shock. Um, I didn't know what to even do for him. And I, I tried to comfort him a little. And then, then I took off and started calling people saying, you're never going to believe this. I was in another tornado. Like nobody else noticed. Uh, it hit downtown Nashville. <laughs> and, um, and then uh, about six, I, I don't know how long. It wasn't that long. Uh, six weeks or so after that, I was in in uh, Clarksville speaking in a bank. And I got out to the car when I was done. It was late at night, about nine o'clock at night, got to the car. And I had like 16 people that had called me and saying, get out of there. There's another tornado and you don't need to be anywhere near there <laughs> with everything that's happened lately. And, and um, about three o'clock in the morning, a tornado hit that building and leveled it. And what I learned from that is not to fear storms, but to respect them. It's not about fear, it's about respect. And when it comes to this virus, and I started asking into the virus, what do you want from us? To learn about respect again. This is about learning about respect again, because people have not respected each other. It's not about fearing the storm. It's not about fearing this. It's about like today, when I went to the farmer's market, it's about respecting each other. Th that came so clearly and I'll talk more about it. I've actually been doing a lot of writing and getting just this stream. I, I was doing automatic writing yesterday. Just, I, I couldn't hardly keep up. It was coming so fast. And that was one of the things that I got. This is about respect. And it's about respecting our physical being. It's not about not being in a fifth dimension. But we don't survive. It, we've got to come down to the third dimension in order to eat. Living up there is not going to feed us. We are physical. We've got to come down here to poop. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is third dimension, folks. That's just the way it is. You know, we, we, to feed our family, to care for people, we, we come here. But that doesn't mean we have to live in fear. That means we live in respect. Does that make sense? I think I'd rather poop up there. <laughs> but, do, but is this making sense? Yeah, it makes sense. You know, it, I hear these things about the, you know, the fifth dimensionary energy, and I, yes, yes, I get that. But we are still physical beings. If we're floating around up here, we're not making money. You know, we got to come down here into the physical in order to make money to survive. We are charged with these bodies for however long we get to keep them. And so that's, that's, where, that's what I keep hearing again and again and just saying people aren't getting what this is all about. They're not understanding the full picture. And it is about respecting both dimensions. It's not about choosing one or, or, over the other. So I, I don't know. 
love your love your comments bernadette i just wanted to say i love listening to the governor of new york mm -hmm. because he is just he gives it to you straight out he gives you the facts i like facts mm -hmm. and i loved his comment that he said you do not have a right to infect anybody else again that was going back to the thing of respect yeah and you know he's like these people are working hard to take care of you you they do not need more people going in there because of stupidity and i or really rebellion. Thought, wow for some yeah, and, and the thing is they have to treat the stupid people along with the others exactly, exactly. so we haven't gone anywhere so <laughs> We've been pretty isolated. We'll go to the store every once in a while and back, but we don't go anywhere. And, you know, I, this, this is what does anger me, is making it something political, because this is not political. It doesn't care what party you belong to. You know, it, it doesn't care how rich you are or how poor you are or your age. And it doesn't have a rhyme or a reason. You know, the nurse that said that they lost a two month year old, you know, and people say, well, you're living in fear and you're not in the fifth dimension. Well, folks, do you think that baby was living in fear that died? It just is. It's about respecting it. We are being given a gift of learning about respect again, of learning how to respect our humanness. I thought it was so cool when I went to the store, I went to Walgreens to get some stuff and all the Easter candy is still there. We, we just went to the farmer's market, uh, Ellie's Donuts, Dan, we call it Dan's Donuts. Um, we love Dan's Donuts because he does everything organic and it, they are the best donuts ever. There was not a line, but there was a line for healthy food. People are learning to respect their body and they're not buying the junk food. They're not buying the donuts. They are, there was a line for all the greens. There was a line for, you know, um, uh, pasture, fed, pasture fed, um, you know, animal uh, uh, meats and, and, and eggs. People are respecting their body. Let's pay attention to the message we're being given. It's about respect. We're changing, folks. And I love this. It's such a miracle. It just, it really, I see it as a miracle. If we, if, if things like this didn't happen, if sickness didn't happen, if tragedy didn't happen, there would be no miracles. And we love our miracles. We love our miracles. Out of everything that happens, there are blessings. My dad, you know, my dad dying. I got to see a man die the way he wanted to. He said he wanted to be present when he died and he died the day before they were going to put him on medication where he'd have been out of it and wouldn't have been present when he died. He got to be there. He got to experience that transition. That's a miracle. There's miracles everywhere. So if we're not living in the bodies that we are charged with, we, we miss so much. So that's my preachiness. <laughs> folks and that's that's what i'm that's what i'm getting uh, i'll be happy to read in fact i will read it for everybody because i'm still getting more information and tomorrow we're going to go to the world viewing room which is fifth dimension by the way and we're going to view what's going on from up there and the 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 information that i'm getting it's it's from an objective point of view I only get angry when I when I'm here and I see this disrespect. <laughs> I, it does make me mad because I don't I don't want to see anybody suffer. I don't want to see anybody have to go through this. When I was sick, I wasn't in fear. I didn't know it existed. 
you know, and by somebody making a blanket statement like that, you're, you're making people who have been sick guilty. That bothers me. Those are the kind of things that bother me. So there you have it. Um, Andrew? Hi. Uh, Hi, uh, so good to I, see I, you. I, I finally got off my other webinar that I was on uh, this morning. It took longer than I expected, but it was something that I got out of it, which I would like to share one little uh, thing and read it out to you. Um, there's this, uh, like my friend Marilyn, she has this uh, uh, person, her name was Gina, who was do, doing a channel. And she talked, one of the things she talked about was what she got, information she got. And, and I'll just read briefly. Uh, and she talked about boundaries. And I'm just going to read out the list that she, she had written down. And hopefully it resonates with people here. Um, to know yourself and to be focused and present. To recognize real legitimate fear and have a plan to face it. Let go of comparing self with others. Please just be true to who you are. Relax control. Allow for spontaneity and flexibility. Free yourself from guilt, knowing or unknowing, clear the history. Um, she talked about mind chatter, the white noise that distracts you. Choose how you want to feel and project that. You are a powerhouse of creativity and energy. Connect and be. Release stress and put yourself first in consideration of others. Let patience be the way, honor, trust, and belief, have faith. Focus on the path you wish to walk. Let all else fall away. Uh, she talks about keep your counsel until invited. Uh, let your mind, body, heart, and spirit be in harmony together. Life is an adventure. Live each day with love. Please look uh, forward to your future. Don't live in the past. Let go, enjoy being free to choose, fly, love, and be in love. And lastly, listen to your intuition, trust what you get, believe in yourself. Beautiful. It, it, it was actually, you know, I'll, 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 I'll post, uh, there's gonna be a recording of it coming out and so I'll have a chance to share it. So it, it was just a very impactful, like, Holy moly, a lot of information uh, that, that came through. Uh, but I just thought this would be a, a nice thing to share right now. Um, and I, I have, but it was just, you know, it's just so interesting how, how things are, are, are coming together or how, you know, we're being like, it's nice how we're being supportive and it's just wonderful. Anyways. Um, so I've had a busy morning connecting. You have, you have. It's so good to see you. And, and I, I even managed I just to post in the group. You. And I even managed to post in the group. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be late. So I texted you, Cindy, because I was like, just to let you know. So in case Ferris was not one. <laughs> yeah, no, Ferris is here and he's doing better. And test was negative. So. <laughs> oh, that's good. We're, okay. we're hoping. We're hoping it's accurate. Well, you oh, know yeah. what? Let's just, you know, let's just say it's negative, not even worry about it. You know what? It feels, when I feel into it, it feels negative. And it did beforehand, but I just don't, I'm just not going to take any chances with, with my buddy. Yeah, well, just, you know, important thing is, is Ferris is back. Yep. That's the main thing. Ferris is back. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> let's celebrate. <laughs> I did. I got up. <laughs> we, 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 we need Mary's banana, whatever thing she made the other day. We need her to make another batch just for celebration. And, 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 and <laughs> I need bread pudding. That's what I <laughs> bread pudding. You know what? You know what really pisses me off, Cindy? What? You were talking about all the candy that nobody's buying. I decided to cut out candy, and now it's all going to go on sale. It's 50 There's going to be buttloads of it on sale, and I've cut it out. I want it. Well, you can go get it. You know. I actually got myself some jelly beans, y'all, because Friday night is my night that I splurge, and um, I just, I love jelly beans. So I have jelly beans on Friday night, and 
we had jelly beans and a glass of wine. And I found this wine that doesn't have the tannins and the histamines in it. And my lips didn't blow up. I usually have such a bad reaction to it. It's wonderful. And I said, Gary, we've got to always get this because I love wine, but I've never been able to drink it. And it always gives me that headache, you know, and it, it was, it's really wonderful. Um, so I get to have a little glass of wine and, you know, my eyes aren't all swollen up and <laughs> it's great. Um, and, and jelly beans because they were on sale. <laughs> Okay, I want to hear from anybody else. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, Taryn? Can you hear me? Yep. There you go. Uh, yeah. I, um, I was going to send you uh, something that my sister sent me as a message from the virus and something my brother wrote. And uh, I tried to. And... Um, it came back on the uh, the message was uh, refused by your server as probably spam. Oh, I'll look and see if it showed up. So I don't know what to, uh, uh, what to do. I'd, uh... Did you try just hitting reply on one of the emails? Yes, that's what I did. And it and it came back, huh? Yeah. Well, we'll look and see if it's it's in a spam folder somewhere. No, um, it bounced back. Oh, so they, they they wouldn't response. accept it, you know. Okay. Well, we'll check into that because I would love to to read it because my see, yeah. uh, I'm getting such strong downloads right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. again, I want to. I want to do it tomorrow because I want to read this from the world viewing room and mm -hmm. I haven't posted or written this up. In fact, Ferris and I, I, I told everybody yesterday, both Ferris and I've been getting a lot of information and we've decided to do a blog on the soul view because all of this is from a soul view. And um, here we talk about everything from all levels from fifth dimension you know, third dimension. We talk about a lot of stuff. All of this is going to be, um, you know, stream of consciousness stuff. And, um, and so Ferris and I are trying to create a, a blog. Does anybody know how to put up a blog? <laughs> we're looking for a volunteer that can help us to create that because right now, because we're not making any money, we don't, we can't hire somebody to do it for us. So we're just looking for volunteers. If anybody knows anybody that can make that site, we've got the URL, but we don't have, you know, we don't know how to, at least I don't know how, maybe Ferris can figure it out. Um, we're gonna create a blog out of it. And we're going to just start because sometimes uh, I just want to turn on the phone and start talking because it's coming so fast that I can't keep up. And what is, what is interesting for all of you who channel information, um, when, when you start channeling information, um, you have to say it fast or you have to record it fast or it goes away because it's not coming from me. Uh, it's just coming through me. And when that happens, it's got to be recorded faster. I don't get it. So um, that's what that blog is going to be. When it starts coming, I'm just going to either record or do automatic writing and then post it. Well, I'd like to hear it or read it or something anyway. Okay, hey, we'll, we'll send you, that's, we don't want to do it on Facebook. We want to do it for people that don't want to be on Facebook. Yeah. We want to give them a URL to go to because specifically because of what you said, Taryn, you didn't want to go on Facebook. Yeah. So this will be, um, we'll set it up so it's a membership type thing. You, you know, it's where you have to sign up. We don't want just random people coming into it, I don't think. Well, we have to think about that, how to, how to do it. But again, I don't know. I can do yeah. the design work if somebody gives it to me. I, I do design work, but I don't know all the technical stuff. I don't either, so. But yeah. I was going to so try it again, Taryn. Huh? Try it again. I, I, I was going to say uh, about Facebook, uh, there was, I took a class one time 
on the internet that they had a, a Facebook group for uh, their, um, uh, you know, the people that went to this class. And I thought, well, I'd sure like to get at that. But boy, when it came to uh, trying to, uh, to sign up for a Facebook, it scared me so bad. I felt like um, if I joined Facebook, I would no longer be a person, but just a, uh, a piece of merchandise property of Facebook. Yeah, it, I do it because it's where most people gather and I'm just careful. I'm careful there. You know, I just, I have to be super careful of even the stuff that I post. Um, I think I've told you I, I had a death threat one time and, um, <laughs> and it was just crazy. It's like, did you, did you threaten me and, and why? Is that who you are? And I don't remember the conversation. I actually have the thread of, and how I ended up engaging this person. And we are now friends. And we talk. He sends me stuff all the time. But it, it was interesting. I decided not to buy into his fear. Yeah. So I'm like, you don't really mean that. You don't know me. Let me tell you about myself. I have an Indian motorcycle. What kind do you have? And I knew he was a motorcycle rider. And, and he has a Harley. And um, and he was asking me that we started a conversation through our motorcycles and then we ended up being friends. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm like, it's kooky sometimes. So I, I get that. I won't engage in that stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe he could take a photo of the document and send it as an attachment. You know, that's Alice said that. Um. Yeah, it, it'll, I'll, I'll send it for a, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't have a good way to do that, but I, uh, I can, it's not a long thing, it's, it's less than a page anyway. Uh, anyway, I'll give it a try. Okay. <laughs> All right, and uh, Lynn said something about the documentary, Vaccines Revealed. Um, I don't know. Okay. I, I, I don't want to share anything that's, that is, uh, conspiracy theory stuff. And, um, I, I have read some of those documents and I haven't gotten any information about them injecting us with chips in the vaccinations and all of that. I'm not going to buy into that fear. Um, so if I get something on it, I'll let you know, but I'm, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to go there. It, it, it's not feeling right to me to go to, to create that fear in people. Um, anybody else? What do you feel about that? Andrew? Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to, uh, I'm going back to Terrence thing. Um, I don't know if he just sends us to your email address or if he sends us to Ferris. Otherwise, if he wants, he can send it to me and then I pass it on to you, you guys. You can try sending it to Ferris at Energized Living Today instead of news at Energized Living Today. Oh, it's, a different, okay. it's a different server, so that might so it might work okay. And it's F A R R I S. Yep. So just 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 a, as a thought and. Um, I, I know, uh, I'll talk to you afterwards, Cindy, about the WordPress, because, uh, uh, um, uh, and we'll, I'll just call you afterwards when you're done. Okay, all right, thank you. All right. Um, all right, any other comments, anybody? Bernadette? A couple of things, I had asked that when Theo came on our, our webinar, Mm -hmm. uh, I had asked that exact question about the virus and the immunizations and Theo said it was not true. Yeah. And that's, so, that's what I'm getting to. I keep asking into it. And when I'm doing this, it's just um, more fear, you know, people spreading fear among people. And I'm not, I'm not getting that at all. 
Yeah, well, I had been receiving it, so I just asked, and he answered. I know we answered. It was answered, so it is not true. It's fear. Yeah. The thing about 5G is not either because that, like he said, it's in our atmosphere. It's always been here. Nothing with that as well. So all of that is conspiracy. And then the thing about the virus I have on my Facebook, it's a message from the virus, and it's actually a pretty positive, you know. So if you'd like me to, I can share it to our Facebook. Please, please do. Okay. I really want people to get interactive there and then interactive again when we set up this blog, then we can we can even move things over there to the soul view because uh, again, I want to I want to really make this about the download information because I don't want it, you know, as a human being, I have an opinion. Um, this isn't about my opinion. When I get when I get these downloads, it's not my opinion. It's it's what I'm receiving. It's I don't know. If, does that make sense to anybody? <laughs> it's information. Oh. Yeah, it's information that I'm being given. And what is really cool when I talk to Theo, when I talk to Sheila and Marcus, I'm getting the same thing they're getting. So it's confirmation. And and Susie said the same thing. And by the way, Susie's coming back. Um, she's coming back on on uh, Wednesday. So be looking forward to her. And she's going to make it more specific about what we can be looking forward to. And I had a hit, y'all. Ah, I forgot to share this. I had a, a hit the other day. Um, and Gary actually made it make sense to me. Um, he got on the elevator at work and um, he saw we are going to be experiencing social distancing until 2022. Uh, Remember when I had him write on the calendar, I said 222 means something to me, 222. And he went and said, I said, it's a significant date. <clears throat> and he went and he put it on the calendar, 222. Well. And I kept saying, but it means more than that. It means it, there's something else besides the fact that 222 was the last day I saw my dad in person alive. And um, so he had written it on the calendar. I didn't know for weeks afterwards until I saw the last picture that I took with my dad that it was on 222. But I said, there's something else. There's something else. And as soon as he said in 2022, that's 222. Two, that's how long we're going to be going through this. And it hit me and I went, <laughs> that's the other part of the equation I didn't know. So there you have it. And that's not about fear. Again, this is an exercise in respect. Learning to love and respect each other. So, okay, Any, anyone else? Boy, I'm preaching today, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Cindy, does that mean that we are going to have to do this for two more years? It means that the respecting distance from people, we're, um, I don't know what it's gonna look like and I'm asking that and um, and that's something to ask Susie too, because she's getting a lot of information around it. And it's going to, this, this virus is going to be around for two more years. And the thing yeah, is, yeah. what is that? What, Taryn? Oh, no, I was just having a, a little difficulty with some that I got on. I didn't know you could still hear me. Oh, oh okay. All right, I'll mute you. I'll mute you. Uh, okay. You <laughs> okay, we've got you muted now. Um, but this isn't about living in fear again. We have a vaccination. I mean, the flu has been around for a long time and each year we get a new vaccination. We're gonna under, we're, we have two years to really understand this. That's, that's what I'm getting from this. To, and what that's gonna look like, 
I don't fully know yet, but I will know because I'm getting more information all the time, Anne. And um, this is, um, well, I'm going to have to let it continue to come through. It's, it's continuing to come through. And when it does, I just have to sit and start writing. Like I said, I just, it comes so fast and furious that I just got to record it. Um, the, um, what else was I going to say? I forgot it left me. Oh, tornadoes are still around. Hurricanes are still around. You know, the earth still shifts and, and we still get earthquakes. You know, the weather is still here. It rains, it storms, and we've learned how to deal with it. That's my best way of describing. We're, we're going to learn, we're going to learn through this. Okay, it's not going to be like the social distancing we're doing now. There'll still be social distancing, but I don't know what that's going to look like yet. Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, we're not going to be isolated for two years. No, we're not going to be isolated. I'm just, yeah, I'm yeah. just, I think people will go crazy. Yeah, no, we won't because we're social beings. That's why. So that's yeah. But the but the, look at look at what's happening. You know they're they're washing down carts now. How many germs are spread that way all the time? The flu is spread that way. You know, they're going into the elevators, which is a little box that everybody gets into. You know, the rides at Disney where, or, or, and, and Universal Studios, which is where I picked it up. And, you know, they're going to be washing things down. So people, it's, there's a new respect. So I don't want to lose that. Ferris, how do you feel about all this conversation? I'm trying to decide how to respond to, to, uh, to, okay. Uh, yeah, you can, you can Google seventh generation, which is a great company, by the way. Uh, I love their products. Uh, and being an RN in the USA and Canada and having a grandpa that's a pharmacist doesn't necessarily make you an expert. Uh, it does make you someone who is aware. Uh, there are an awful lot of experts and I'm going to have to go with the, with the overwhelming majority of experts. Uh, someone sent me a, uh, a link to a, to a YouTube video about describing how 5G caused the coronavirus. Part of the guy's proof was that the Spanish flu came about at about the same time that we had radio. And radio caused the Spanish flu. Now, the scientific term for that is bullshit. <laughs> and it really pisses me off. Did I tell y'all Ferris is outspoken? <laughs> <laughs> He makes me look mild. <laughs> there is overwhelming evidence that vaccines do not cause uh, uh, autism. Autism, thank you. Uh, I can't remember the name of the book. Uh, well, in the movie Vax. But there is a book about, uh, about the proof about the evidence, and it's written by a scientist who works with vaccines whose son is autistic. Uh, anyway. Um, Penny says, uh, rolling on the floor, Ferris. Um, <laughs> I, I believe that's what that R-O-F-L. Um, well, it's not just raffle. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, 
we all hear information, we get it from d different sources. Um, if we are distrusting everybody, then we're not, we're, we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Is, is any of the, the government agencies trustworthy? Well, they, you know, they're going to get things wrong. Do you get things wrong? I do. I do things wrong all the time. And you know what? I still love me. I'm still a great person. I'm still loving. I'm still giving. I do my best. You know, and that's all any of, a, uh, of us can ask. And to discredit these agencies when we need them most, to me, is irresponsible. And that's what's, what I'm seeing. It's irresponsible. These people are trying to help us. And they're doing more right than they're doing wrong. Do they need to fix some things? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they need to fix some things. And they're working on it. And we need to be supportive of that. And when they do something wrong, we need to be supportive in speaking up, not spreading this to the masses. You need to go to them and say, here's what I see that's wrong. And when I see a wrong, you know, everybody knows me as an activist. And when I see a wrong happening, I don't go to and just talk about it to the masses. I go to the person that needs to hear it that can do something about it. Let's, let's do that. That's what an activist does. So again, boy, we're just getting all preachy today. <laughs> it hurts me. What is this energy going on? Well, Laura, you we need to know. <laughs> is the moon in Uranus? I don't know. <laughs> No, the sun shines out of mine. <laughs> no, it's it's um, <laughs> Pluto. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, All right. Okay, everybody. Um, oh, this, for Linda. Uh, okay, uh, I love this comment from this funny from Penny. She said, did you hear the news about the 93 year old lady that apparently walked over her family's house and held up a sign that said, need more beer? <laughs> uh, she got, yeah. And people gave her tons of beer. <laughs> That's so funny. I, I haven't heard that, but I haven't been watching the news much. And Linda, this is, this is my, old, no, it's my second oldest. She wanted oh, to head. see my, she wanted to see a hat. Oh, okay. This was this was made by a gentleman in Nashville named Jew, and that's not J E W. That's J U. Uh, he used to be a hat maker in Nashville. He came here from from Louisiana many many years ago, and he passed away what twenty twenty five years ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. So there aren't many of them. Anyway, there. Um, can, hey, y'all, can I do one more rant? Yeah. It's, is it okay? I'm going to, I want to. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wait, okay. wait, 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 wait. Lynn, that is cool. Oh, oh, Lynn, look at her. Oh, I love it. I love Lynn. that. That is, you look so good in a hat. You know, my hat is either a visor oh, where'd or she go? glasses. <laughs> Did she disappear? Oh, yeah, she probably touched a button. She, she, left, she left the room. Okay. All right. She'll probably be back. She probably accidentally did that. Okay. One more last rant, everybody. Um, from somebody I love and respect very much, uh, family. They posted last night, you know, if, if you all think that the, the government's doing such a bad job, uh, give back your stimulus check or something of that nature, which is really angered me because 
my friend Cece, who is my age, she's, I would see her every year at the National Speakers Convention. I've got a whole bunch of clothes that I bought from Cece over the years, a pin that's my favorite pin that's a, um, a peacock. And um, she even took it and fixed it and sent it back to me when one of the jewels fell out of it. She's a new grandma. Her daughter and her granddaughter were living with her. And she died. If I got a stimulus check, which I don't qualify for, I would gladly give it back to have her. My friend Steve, 47-year-old triathlete who went to Australia, picked up the virus, spoke to 2,000 people, and came back to the United States and spoke to 1,200 people and he had to leave during his book signing because he was so sick. He died a few weeks ago and I didn't even know it. I'd give you that stimulus check back for him. You know, he, he would share information with me. He, I knew him the, the most. And, and you know, the, the, I've got a lot of friends that are speakers that are sick. They live in New York, you know, and yeah, th that's a dumb statement. Money cannot replace people. And when I hear stuff like that, again, it makes it political. And it, that's, that's what upsets me. That's what gets my blood boiling. And, you know, please don't make this about money. And please don't make this political. Lives. This is about life. This is about respecting life and respecting people. So. That's why you're a cat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a cat. And, you know, that's what. That's what gets me when I hear stuff like that. It's not political, folks. And if, if you make it that way, it's, you're missing the point. We're missing the miracle when you do that, when people do that. So I did respond, and normally I don't even respond to those things, but I, I had to respond to that. And when people ask me, why in the world we've been together for 25 or 27 years, I'm going to play him this back. I love you, Cindy. I love you too, Ferris. And y'all, let's just leave it there. Okay. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, Thank you, you both. So there. Love you all. <laughs> we love you. Bye. Have a great well, day. Right, love you. Love you guys. Love everybody. You have an awesome day. And yeah. tomorrow, I, I'm going to share the downloads. Bye, Miss Sammy. And then two near the bedtime. Everybody.